I'm Brian Dickinson, and this training bite is on static members in System Verilog classes. This is the second in a series of training bites showing you how to use classes in System Verilog. In this one, we're going to have a look at static properties and static methods of a class. So a normal property is dynamic. This means that every instance of your class has its own separate copy of that property. But you can declare properties as being static. And what this means is there's one copy of the property which is shared by all of the instances of your class. So if you update a static property from one instance, you're updating its value for all of the instances of the class. So here I have two instances of frame in F1 and F2. If I assign the static property frame count to be equal to 4 from one class instance, F1, I've also set the property of the F2 instance of frame to be 4 as well. By writing the static property from one instance, you update it for all of the instances. So let's try and understand how this works. Conceptually, what happens is your compiler identifies the static properties of your classes and pre-allocates them in memory at elaboration, so they're not created dynamically. And then every time we create a new instance of my frame class, for instance here in the handle F1, I create an area of memory for the dynamic properties and I link in my single instance of the static property frame count into the F1 instance of frame. And likewise, when I create the instance F2 of frame, I create an area of memory for the dynamic tag property, and I link in my single copy of the static property frame count to that new instance. Now, an interesting side effect of pre-allocating these static properties is you can access the static property from a null handle without having an instance of the frame class. Now, this is occasionally considered to be bad practice because we don't want to access stuff from a null handle. It may be better to use a static method to access that property. So let's have a look at static methods. So a static method is a method which is declared with a static keyword, and it has the restrictions that you can only access static properties or other static methods. And a static property is pre-allocated in memory alongside of your static properties. Now the advantage of this is, again, you can call a static method without having a handle on the class. And there's two ways of doing this. The first way of doing it is to call it using a resolution operator, which is the double colon, from the class name. So frame colon colon get count calls the static method get count of the frame class without there being an instance of frame in existence and this returns the value of the static property frame count and this is best practice because it clearly identifies that method as being static the other way of doing it of course is by calling it from a class handle so i could call f1 get count even though i haven't created the instance in f1 yet even though the f1 is a null handle and again this is considered less good practice perhaps because you're accessing members from a null handle and that's not generally speaking a good idea when you create the instance of the frame inside of F1, then now you can call get count as a normal method off the handle. But again, it may be considered better practice to always use the resolution operator to access the static method, because then that clearly identifies the method as being static. So let's see an example of this, and we're going to use these two properties we've been using so far, frame count and tag, to show you an interesting implementation for static properties. So here what we do in the constructor of the frame class, I increment my frame count static property, and I assign that static property frame count to the dynamic property tag. And the idea now here is that frame count counts the number of frames I've created. It's always incremented for each new constructor call. But even better, tag gives me a unique count, a unique identity for every instance of my frame. So when I create the first instance frame in the handle F1, I increment frame count to 1, and F1 is given a tag of 1. When I create the new instance F2 of frame, I increment frame count to 2, so both of the instances of frame can see a frame count of 2, but interestingly now F2 has a unique tag 
value of 2, F1 has its old tag value of 1, and I have a unique tag for each instance of my class. So that's a quick look at static properties and static methods. In the next byte in the series, we'll have a look at aggregation, aggregate classes, classes which have properties which are in turn class instances. Thank you.